Hi, a lot of people have been asking, why am I fasting so long? And they have concerns for my health. So I'm gonna address this in this video. Also, I'm starting my green screen. I like your comments. I'll be trying different backgrounds and let me know which ones you like best. Why am I fasting for so long? First, the health benefits. When you do fasts, you get different benefits as you go on. Obviously, consuming all of the glucose in your system is very beneficial. But another benefit of fasting is called autophagy. As your body doesn't have fuel, doesn't have protein, it starts consuming itself. So there's something in your body called senescent cells. These cells are cells that are not functioning properly because they've been replicating or for whatever reason, they're not, they don't have mitochondria and they're just floating in the system. They start replicating and you start having more and more of these cells in your system and your system starts operating less than optimal. When you fast, your body has to turn to, where do I get protein? And it goes and it eats these senescent cells. Anything that is not imperative for the body gets consumed during the fasting process. So a great example of this is people that lose a lot of weight very fast doing traditional diets. When they do traditional diets, they lose a lot of the fat, but you have all this leftover skin and they have to do all these surgeries to try to get the skin back. If you look at people that lost their weight through fasting, the skin gets reabsorbed into the body because the body needs these collagens and these proteins that are during the skin. So they're eating up the skin. And when you lose the weight, the skin moves with the loss of the fat. Our bodies were made to fast. If you just look at our ancestors, you didn't have access to food all the time. In our modern societies, you never go more than eight hours without eating. So you're always spiking that insulin. Your pancreas needs a break. And that's part of the reason that 90% of us get some form of diabetes before old age. By fasting, you give your pancreas a break and you turn to a different mechanism of fuel, which is fat. Further into the fast, on day five approximately, you start producing stem cells. These stem cells are the same stem cells that you had before you were born, when you were a very young child. And these stem cells can go to different parts of the body and help you heal. So if you have joint pains, if you have some, uh, some kind of injury that's not healing, this is very healing for that. And I can attest to that. I had these different things. One was called for elbow, Another was a tendonitis on my foot. Boom. They're all gone. And typically they stay healed. Additionally, your body is now functioning on ketones. The two forms of energy for the body are sugar or fat. When you're consuming fat, you're basically using ketones for the body. To, and any sugar that you need, any glucose, your body just makes it. It produces it. And so you always have the optimal amount of sugar in your blood and your brain is functioning out a lot better because ketones are a much better fuel for the brain. There are several studies using coconut oil and different forms to generate more ketones for people with Alzheimer's and it has very healing properties for the brain. Mental benefits. One of the mental benefits is just training discipline. Right now I'm smooth sailing again because typically a fast, you have a fairly easy time in the beginning that gets really hard. And by hard, I mean you have low energy, you feel really hungry, but it's not a hunger that's the typical hunger. It's very different. You can only express when you're fasting, but it feels uncomfortable. And once you're on the other side, your body's now going full force, using the fat very efficiently, using the ketones very efficiently. And so that process of discipline helps you build a stronger will. Then also your mental state. When you're in a fasted state, you're much calmer. You're much more focused. Typically, people use fasting in religious ceremonies to hone in and center themselves and connect spiritually. I didn't do anything differently during this fast that I would have done, but you could combine this fast with a meditation retreat or a silence, and it'll really, really take it to the next level. So what's been my experience so far? This was interesting because I've done fasts like this before, but typically I'm already in a ketogenic diet and I'm going straight into the fast. And I feel that bump, the difficulty much sooner. This time, I think the first time I had a fairly hard time was day six and then day eight. Day eight was really tough. But yesterday and today, I've been breezing along, super easy, no problem. In terms of fat stores, I started as 220 pounds. I don't, I'm not even measuring myself, but that's something that people typically do to stay motivated in the fasting. What I'm doing to stay motivated is these videos. So that, you know, I have some accountability. So if I push myself much more because I want to see how far I, but I did measure myself in the supermarket yesterday and it was like 196. So that's 24 pounds lost. Now, a lot of that is water rate. So I don't know how much is water rate. I expect about 10 pounds. Still, 
it's a lot of weight. That would be 14 pounds of fat loss. And part of the reason is I am walking every day. I walk between two miles and five miles on my treadmill as I'm working. I put it on a slow pace, two miles an hour, and I'm just working while I do it. And that walking really, really helps. That's what, one of the things that I think really makes the fasting a lot easier because as you're moving, your body suddenly needs that energy. So that I'm not even going to bother trying to get them to eat. I'm just going to see where I can get that energy. Other than walking, salts are very important. When you're in a ketogenic state, you lose a lot of your electrolytes and you got to replace them. You really only need regular table salt and sodium salt. There's a, a salt called no salt, which is basically potassium and regular table salt. Those two are great. If you can add magnesium, you're golden. People also add baking sodium, which is sodium bicarbonate, or you can have trace minerals. Those are less important, but you just need to make sure that you're consuming enough salts or else you'll feel headaches. Or, you don't work well when your electrolytes are low. And you also feel a lot of cramps if your electrolytes are low. If you have your electrolytes on point, you're fine. I do something very counterintuitive. Most of the time when people are fasting because it's so difficult, they try to stay away from food and all that kind of stuff. I'm doing this not just for weight loss. I'm also doing it as a test and as an exercise. And so anytime my wife is cooking for the kids or there's, uh, we're going by somewhere and it's a good smell, I actually embrace it. I go and I smell the food and I prove to myself that I'm stronger than that. And it really helps me. Actually, it just makes it easier for me. So I, I don't know if that works for everybody, but it definitely works for me. People ask me what some of the best ways to get, to, to get started with fasting are. I believe one of the best ways is intermittent fasting. So just start pushing your breakfast later. And if you start eating after two, you're already intermittent fasting. Uh, and if you can get it to a four hour window, you're basically fasting for 20 hours a day. Another way is going into keto. And also carnivore, basically having almost no carbs, your body will go through a transition. Sometimes you could keep a little bit of the carbs and go reducing them little by little. So you don't have, you don't get something called the keto flu. The keto flu is basically your body not being able to access fats because you've always had sugar in the system. And it's a little difficult in the beginning. So sometimes if you go gradual, it's easier. Some people like hitting it hardcore. But once you're fat adapted, it you can go back and forth much easier. You can go back to eating the regular diet and you can go to keto and you're not going to feel this keto flu the following times. I actually believe in if you're going to go strictly for weight, alternate day eating is one of the best forms of fasting. So basically one day you eat whatever you want and then you fast for a day. Obviously you don't want to eat twice as many calories as your basic metabolic rate, but it's very easy to eat within your rate. So. The day that you fast, you fast. And the day that you don't fast, you forgot that you fasted. Just eat normally and you're going to be basically consuming half of the calories you would have otherwise. And by eating this way, you have access to your fats much more easily than if you were trying to just reduce the calories. And the reason is because if there's any sugar in your system, your body's going to always go for the sugar first. And when you go on times without eating and there's no sugar, the body has to turn to the fat as a source of that. So that's the update for today. Maybe it's a little longer video, just answering a lot of questions that people might have. If you have more questions, more comments, let me know and let me know what you think of this background.